All right, welcome back to Flag and Socks, the podcast, episode 133. Today on the show, new Senate twink just dropped. No world where we don't talk about that. Then, in Cringe of the Week, I tell you why I hate streamers. Then, in Urban Decay, bigotry of low expectations continues. This time, a murder suspect is not described by police because he's black, and that would be racist, I guess. And last but not least, did this guy give the worst wedding vows of all time? I think maybe. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 133, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck the Stocks the Podcast featuring Richard Richard. All right, one for one on the intro as always. Guys, if you're like me, you're constantly looking for ways to trick your brain into breaking your bad habits. And I'm here today to tell you that I found a product that does just that. I'm not talking about seeing a hypnotist or taking pills or going to talk to a doctor. I'm talking about our sponsor, Fume. Fume helps you redirect your actions from bad habits to just habits so you can accomplish your goals without drastic, unsustainable changes. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habits easy. Fume tastes great and is fun to fidget with. Start the holidays off right with a new good habit by going to tryfume.com slash fleckus and pick up their journey pack today. That's tryfume.com, T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com slash fleckus. The code fleckus will give you 10% off at checkout. Start your new good habit today and try their new Solano Fume. It's a very sleek, very good looking piece. It has a walnut barrel and an onyx mouthpiece. Very nice, very delicious. Pick one up today. Trifume.com slash Fleckus is the site. Link is below. Thank you guys for watching. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Fume. Thank you, Fume. It's always good to break your bad habits. It is. However you can. (laughs) All right. First things first. What do you guys think we're going to talk about right off the bat? Is it the Senate twink? It's the Senate twink, of course. And you know what sucks is the Senate twink, all that stuff's breaking Friday afternoon. We just released a podcast. We're mostly chilling. I hate when they get released, like, yeah. not in our schedule. But if you yeah. think we're going to miss this opportunity to talk about this guy. We are not going to miss this opportunity. I stayed up pretty much all weekend just watching the clip over and over, trying to find clues. If you guys have the uncensored version, please send it because I need as many clues as we can get out of this. Yeah, even though we already know his identity, there's still more clues to be found, I think. (laughs) There could be. Watch it backwards. Yeah. There's different ways to watch it uh, to get as many clues as possible, and that's what we got to do as patriots. Absolutely. That's our duty. (laughs) (laughs) That's our duty as Americans. All right. Well, everyone knows what happened. We're not going to show it yeah. because it's like gay P-O-R-N. A guy, two gay guys made gay porn in a Senate hearing room. You guys probably saw it. Yeah, exactly. You guys, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. probably saw it because everyone was sharing it. And there's two takes uh, whenever this happens. It's like, look at this. This is disgusting. And get that off my timeline. I really don't like gay porn on my timeline. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, but we did get the response from the twank. He, he wrote... Uh, he, he, he called it attacked for who I love. Yeah. Well, can you read the whole response? Said, yeah. So what 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 do you do when you film gay porn and you get caught and fired? You say, this has been a difficult time for me as I've been attacked for who I love to pursue a political agenda. While some of my actions in the past have shown poor judgment, I love my job and would never disrespect my workplace. Yeah, you get it. You get it. Poor judgment. <laughs> love. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're calling it? You're calling this poor judgment? Yeah. Animalistic bee fucking. <laughs> That's love, I guess. I don't, I don't yeah, know. This is way worse than January 6th. You think Pete Buttigieg watched the video? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he was looking it. for clues. He liked it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the way worse than January 6th, I think this guy should be on a sex offender list. I think that's reasonable. And I think that's very reasonable. Maybe we're just being prude Republicans. Oh, yeah. But this always kind of happens where we're called prude Republicans, but we really are painting a picture of what gay guys are up to. Mm -hmm. They're basically down to fuck whoever, wherever, 
whenever on camera. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. And then, yeah, you got to think about like, what have I seen recently? What's my mental model of gay men, right? Yeah, what are they up to? And it's just, it's like, well, I don't know. Like you, you think back to news stories and you go, oh, that, that dog got monkey pox. Oh then, yeah. And then you go, oh man, that, that the couple in Atlanta, they adopted those kids, those boys, and then they sexually abused them. And then there was yeah. there was that festival where the monkeypox, they didn't even tell them not to fuck. They told them to cover the sores and fuck through it. Yeah, basically. And so you, you get these things. Oh, and then the senator, uh, he, they hired him, and he's in the room, and he's filming gay porn. And, and then the luggage twink stealing everyone's clothes. and then Stealing at, literally women's dresses. Yeah, and, and then you, everyone knows what they do at the dog park. <laughs> we don't need to tell you. Everyone's getting sucked at the dog park. And so it's not, it's like this constantly horny, like degenerate culture that, uh, you know, people, I saw some gay people on Twitter who were like defend, cause there were the right wing gays who were like, this is disgusting. Have some decency, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And then they were like, oh yeah, you're prude. And like kind of scoffing at it. And it's like, you just are starting to develop this mental model. That's not really great. Yeah, you know? and the right wing gays like pretending they're mad about it, mm -hmm. but like they kind of do this too. So it's like you kind of like you start to realize what everyone's up to. Yeah, and we're not even mentioning the gay men who dress up as women and then play sports. Yeah, you know, so we haven't even dug into that yet. But yeah. so the mental model's looking ugly. Mental model's looking ugly, uh, and like it's basically the opposite of that song, "Baby, It's Cold Outside." Oh, yeah. Remember yeah, that yeah. song, Baby, It's Cold Outside, where it's a guy and a girl, and it's like, I really should go, and he's like, stay for one more drink or whatever. Mm -hmm. So It's like a guy, and then the girl is like, I shouldn't. And there's like a dynamic, like an opposites dynamic, but when you have two gay guys- oh, The governors are off. The governor is off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an accelerating problem, and the song goes a little different. Yeah, it's just two guys going getting equally and more aggressively <laughs> horny, you know? And it's like, okay, so that's what gay relationships are, right? <laughs> Yeah, but we're told decency's on the ballot for for 2020. Remember, yeah. Doctor Jill posted that decency, decency is on, on the, ballot. the ballot, and we've had like the trans person who showed their tits at the White House. We've had this now, the nuclear guy, the luggage twin, the monkeypox guy. The, yeah, the monkeypox satanist guy who wears the leather daddy shit. The gay Christmas special yeah. they made. So decency is just like more gay shit, is what it sounds like to yeah. Doctor Jill. Yeah, exactly. And then there's a George Santos meme that was pretty funny, I thought. Yeah, George Santos watching Congress get gayer in his absence. <laughs> He's just spooked. Oh, man. And this is why it's so important to be henchmen maxing, because mm. henchmen are the opposite of twinks. I agree. You that's, know what I'm saying? I, I feel like that's why we've been drawn to it. Yeah. Oh, and also this guy, this twink, sorry, before we oh. show the henchmen, this twink had a Reddit profile that was called like bareback twink slut. Mm. So he self-identified as a twink. Yeah. We use it as kind of a derog, derogatory thing, but he's using it. So, yeah. and soon we're going to run into a list where it's like, oh yeah, the luggage twink. And then it's like, and the Senate twink. And then there's going to be another twink incident in the Senate. And then another twink incident where somebody also steals luggage. And the and it's iterations like, are going to go crazy. Yeah, you're going to have to get more specific in our naming conventions yeah. where it's like, black, oh yeah. The black Senate twink. The bald luggage twink. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's going to get crazy. It's going to be hard to keep track yeah, of all these people. Exactly. God forbid. Trump loses, mm -hmm. we're going to have a whole new slew of twinks to, that need names. Yeah, which is why it's now's the time to henchman, Max, guys. Mm -hmm. Now is not the time to be any sort of twink. Uh, and our boys, Donut Operator, yeah. um, the whole the whole crew is henchman maxing here. Love to see it. Absolutely. And then the, a key for henchman maxing is you need a boss. Mm -hmm. and so there's a boss here and there's two henchmen, right? That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. And there's another henchman I saw. That's a bad one. It's not a twink, at least. <laughs> not sucking anybody. Um, yeah, so that's the Senate twink section. Hope everyone enjoyed it. I mean, guys, we, we weren't adding any new info. The guy was identified. The senator he worked for was identified, all that. He's but, attacked for who he loves. Yeah. But it's we like, got, no, it's like we're attacking you for who you loved in the Senate room when maybe people were around. Yeah. My favorite thing was getting fully naked. There, there wasn't a thought of like, oh, let's do a quickie in the Senate yeah. room, getting fully <laughs> naked and filming it. Like, or what? like some like under the table shit. Yeah. It's just like, you guys are fully naked here with all the lights on. Janitor did walk in and he just walked right out. Yeah. I don't well, get paid enough that's how that. it goes. Let's move on. Page two of housekeeping. We have a very important housekeeping this week. Make sure you guys use this opportunity to tickle the post, help us juice the algo, leave a comment, leave a comment again. And then your third comment can be whatever you want to talk about. Make sure notifications are on. Make sure you like the video and 
and send the stuff to the P.O. Box. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> a lot of freaking homework I'm just good. to watch the show. <laughs> or just watch the show and like it. Yeah. And at least like the video and leave a couple comments. Make sure notifications are The out. least you can do. <laughs> send us a little something to the P.O. Box. All right. Next part. Zuck is building a bomb shelter. Yeah, uh, Mark Zuckerberg building a $100 million Hawaii compound with massive underground bunker, this report says. So, do you guys think that the tech overlords know anything more than we do? That's a good question. You could take, you could interpret this both ways. I'd say yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Zuck knows what's about to happen, and we all know what's about to happen. I think you, I think you hit a certain net worth, though, and then it's just bunker time. Right. Oh, that's a good point. You might as well have it. Exactly. That's it's you. You don't. You admit you don't know everything, but it's like I got all this money. I might as well have the bunker. And maybe right? you have a hunch that someone's gonna turn on the five G frequency microwavers, and it's gonna microwave everybody with heavy metals in their body. Maybe if they do, got the bunker. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you guys get all the heavy metals out of your body soon because they're gonna turn the microwaves on, and it's gonna turn us into zombies, and it's gonna be like. You're going to have to be putting people down in your own family who you don't even recognize anymore because there's zombies coming at you trying to kill you. Yeah. It's some real Sophie's Choice shit. So it's going to get, get dark. Yeah. 5G aliens microwaving heavy metals. Yeah. Ring true? Know. Rings no. true to me. I'm it's, saying it. Sounds about right. <laughs> it sounds about right for what's coming. Trump's in the lead with the polls. You think that's going to happen? You think that's staying like that? They're turning the microwave on. All right. Let's move on. Gen Z menu anxiety. Yeah, this is kind of a boomer article where boomers and millennials gather together to laugh at Gen Z, mm. but it says Gen Z suffers from menu anxiety when dining out with too many scared to order their own meals. Ah, so it makes you wonder, how come go pick gender, but no able ordering food go restaurant? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Makes me wonder. <laughs> That's all I had for that. Yeah. <laughs> There's the obvious boomer joke. They can't pick a damn gender, much less fish or chicken. <laughs> That's what I like. I like some good boomer shit. Yeah. All right. Speaking of food, large French fries. Yeah. New all-time high. It's got to be a new all-time high. $7 for a large French fry. We are living in the Great Depression. I think this is likely in California, so this might be regional, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and it's on an app, so I don't know. But, but the minimum wage ticking up in those California places ain't helping the fry price. Yeah, exactly. And Joe Biden can lie about his jobs and inflation and the economy. The and oil the, reserves. The oil and the graphs and the costs. And, oh, Thanksgiving was cheaper. Jobs and, report's actually good. Yeah. So he can do that all he wants. But when you go to McDonald, you go to McDonald's. And French fry $7. That's right in your face. You can't obfuscate that. You can't do anything with that. And... Is is it not that? No, no, it's it's seven dollars. Has it ever been that high? No, not even close. It actually used to be like three dollars. Yeah, two oh, x. Easy two so, x. We all know what happened when we go Badano. Yep. All right, let's move on. Let's get more serious. Okay, please. I'm waiting. Um, remember last week that Christian man tore down the uh, Saintness statue in yeah. the Iowa State Hall? Of course. And then uh, people were getting not mad, but people were debating like, is this elite? Is this legal? Should this be allowed? Uh, free speech versus whatever. And then Jenna Ellis, yeah. Jebba, who really knows how to make a dumb point. Yeah, agreed. We'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Jenna, you're probably not going to even see this, but if you do, this is a stupid fat podcast. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, just skip it. Skip <laughs> just, it. Just skip it. Who cares? But she posted something. She, she said, should it be illegal to be a Satanist in America? If so, we don't have genuine religious freedom in this country. Our founders separated from England because that government was compelling its citizens to worship at a specific church in a specific manner. But like, isn't Satanism like anti-religion? Yeah. It's like the opposite of Christianity. It's like you worship the devil instead of God and Jesus. Yeah. And then it's also like ironic and trolling and not even genuine. It's not like, oh, yeah, Satan, we have all these rituals and we do all these things. It's like Redditors. Yeah. It's like a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Antagonistic. Yeah. So this next one is really where the point gets hit home. Can you read it? She said, would you be cool? She posted a poll. Would you be cool with a Christian beheading a statue of Allah in the Iowa State Capitol? Yeah. So if you posted, if you put up a statue of Allah mm -hmm. in the Iowa State Capitol, the Muslims would come, mm -hmm. destroy it, and probably burn down the whole building, too, without even thinking twice. Yeah. They've done that. <laughs> That's I know. what they do. I know. 
So it makes you kind of wonder, and like what what we have here is very special in America, the freedom, right? Mm -hmm. So you give freedom to people, but you need to give it to the right people. Because if you don't, the freedom that we give becomes our vulnerability. Yeah. And it actually will lead to us being enslaved by people that don't care about that freedom, but will use that freedom we're providing to exploit those who provided the freedom. Exactly. And then you have like competing cultures and it's just a power grab, power struggle, and nobody's really following the constitution to a T when the country is now 40% Muslim and they're taking over. You know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. So that's like what our, it's like, that's why we have to be very selective with who we let in because if we let people in in mass from third world countries that don't even understand what true freedom is that we have here the people who fought to get the true freedom and the people who came from those people will lose it yeah. and will basically be giving it away to people who don't even understand what they're doing but they just want to have an islamic state in america they want to get the goal. dub they get, they care about winning and they exactly. don't care about the principles and we're already seeing that in america where in minnesota they just dropped a new flag. Here's the old Minnesota flag, yep. and then here's the new flag, and then here's what the flag of Somalia looks like. Yeah. It so. looks a lot like a Somalian flag, but if you say, that, hey, we're being replaced here, you get called a bigot. Yeah, and it's actively happening. Uh, Minnesota has the largest Somali population, which, you know, how'd that get chosen? How'd that start? The yeah. Ch the chain migration just kept going and going until it's basically little Somalia now. And, uh, you know, at a George F few George Floyd riots and downtown's never the same. Yeah. And, and all those Minnesota, too. Yeah. Minnesota, which was like famously settled by Scandinavians and Germans. And uh, now it's just little Somalia and people all those who like the cold. Uh, yeah, exactly. And all those people who are so, you know, uh, Minnesota nice, as they call it, they're currently getting steamrolled by third worlders with low IQs. Yeah. And also in this photo with uh, what's her name? Ilhan. What? Ilhan. Yeah. Look around this photo. I see Somalian flags. I see Somalian people. I see Somalian headscarves. I see... Somalian phenotypes. I see zero American flags. No. This could be Somalia. Yeah. And they say, oh, diversity is our strength. That's why we need these people here. Where's the diversity? Yeah. All I see is Somalians making America the new Somalia. And then they're also telling us, on the other hand, that it's more important now than ever to be anti-colonialism. Yeah which is like literally what they're doing to us. But that's what globalism looks like. And this is what I thought was interesting when I was kind of like going through preparing for today's show. Mm -hmm. If you stand up for America and try to maintain this country's heritage, culture, and traditions, yeah. they'll call you racist while they try to replace you. Of course. But if you don't say anything and let whatever's going to happen happen, they're still going to call you racist and try to replace you. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a lose-lose as we call it in the business, so you might as well fight. Yeah, exactly. It's like either way you're racist and the future is less white. So like which option's better? And then there's going to be a dominant culture no matter what. Yeah. Is it going to be uh the culture of Americana which we had say 50 years ago? Uh, which is open to anyone who wants to be a part of it, regardless of race, religion, creed, etc. Yeah, baseball, apple pie, barbecues, July 4th, yeah. Christmas. So it's like if you want to be a part of that, you're welcome to be a part of that. There's no exclusions based on anything unless you're antisocial or, you know, anti um, molding in with that group. Yeah, you can't integrate. So if you're not integrating, then you're not really, a, you know, part of it. But for the most part, you can get in, and anyone who we would bring in here as immigrants, we should look for people who would want to get in. If you don't uh, promote the dominating culture and provide the dominating culture, your culture will get dominated. And here are some examples of other cultures that are in the market to dominate, looking to dominate American culture. Yep. Here's one where a Muslim guy is at a, a restaurant, and he's peeing on the pork products. Bro, you meant radical. Alleen omdat hij geen varken wilt eten? Wow. We don't eat pork. We don't eat pork. Uh, we don't eat pork. Yeah. They're pissing on it. <laughs> so and it's yeah, on. it's a it's a grocery store. That's how much he can't stand it, right? Yeah. So you think he's not gonna compete? It looks exactly. like the competition already started. It looks like he's playing to win and everyone else is being told, hey, don't play. That's racist. Don't be racist. Yep. And then here's another one where there's a Christmas uh a Christmas at the mall, at the mall, Santa photos. And look at the people around. So 
that's the other. You know, there's Christmas in America. Nice mommy's trying to get a picture with of her baby with Santa, and uh, Jesus was Palestinian, and Hamas types are swarming. And they're ruining Christmas. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Then here's another culture that's trying that's being promoted at least by the progressives, the degenerate black culture I of call America. It, yeah, of yeah. America. And here's an example of it. Doesn't that song make you kind of want to start a fight? Yeah. <laughs> It's casting a spell on me to yeah. knock out an old white man. Yeah. I really want to play the knockout game right now. And then they let you go. So yeah. these are some competing cultures. Those those cultures are looking to eat your lunch and take your country. Yeah. And uh, they're not going to be very tolerant of you when the uh, shoe is on the other foot, right? And the they're population- not going to say, oh, it's so nice of you to not be colonialist. You're, you're all good now. They're going to put you in the gulag just later. Yeah, the guy pissing on pork. At a grocery store, he's not really going to argue about your constitutional right to have a Satan statue. He's not going to be very understanding about something like that. Yeah. He's going to try and steal your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Add him to his harem. Exactly. And then, so, like, no matter what, the theme we're seeing is that, like, whites need to decrease. White culture needs to decrease no matter what. And they also have the kids in on it, which is obviously a recurring theme. The DEI walkout protests at this school. This school is like an engineering uh, STEM school, I believe. Yeah, in Illinois. In Illinois. And then here's all the kids protesting, just going in the background. You kind of read some uh, yeah. context. Students at the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy, the top STEM school in the state, staged a sit-in and walkout last week over grievances related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Students demanded uh, demands for punitive punishments for alleged bias incident reports included suspensions, expulsions, and even notification of the violating offender to potential future colleges. So, so, so they're arguing that you should get even harsher punishments for alleged biased incidents. You yeah. Know? So they, they're really they're making sure. Iron fist, DEI shit. Mm-hmm. So and they also, a lot of these kids probably used affirmative action to get in the school. Mm. And now that they're in the school, then it becomes like, hey, let's sink the ship now that we have the numbers. Exactly. Fuck the ship. We never cared about the ship. We just want a W. We hit our critical mass, and now it's time for us to rule, right? Yeah, exactly. And they want equality of outcome. That's like one of the main things that we're noticing. Uh, And I saw it with Minnesota, too, the same thing. Like, hey, let's get in. And then once we're in, forget them for being nice for letting us in. We have numbers now. This is our country in Minnesota. Yeah, very short memory, very short attention span for that, for who let you in or what happened or the kindness of another country, right? Yeah, exactly. And we see that also with uh, people that came here that were mad about the food. Mm. There was a headline uh, about migrants. It says, migrants reject bad sandwiches, pancakes, donuts, and chicken dishes at New York City shelters. So they're here illegally. We're putting them up in hotels, but the food we're giving them is not good enough compared to like the Congo or wherever they came from. (laughs) Yeah, they get a Chick-fil-A sandwich and they go, no sauce? Yeah. They're very disrespected by that. And then you're the bad problem. You're the issue. There's an article I saw about uh, xenophobia. It's, can you read it? Yeah, it says, hate the smell of B.O.? You might be xenophobic. Bizarre study finds people who are sensitive to disgusting smells are more likely to have negative attitudes toward, towards migrants. So if you're on the subway and the migrants are there and they don't use proper hygiene and they smell like shit. Someone stinks. And you go, oh, it stinks. You're xenophobic. Yeah. And you know what xenophobic is? Racist. Racist. Yeah. And that's how it works. And it's like, oh, the subway stinks now. And it's like, so everyone just has to lose their standards for whoever comes here from countries with no standards. Yep. And you're xenophobic for noticing. And they keep bringing people here. And then soon you're overwhelmed with all stinky people. It's time to fight a little bit. And the overarching theme that we're noticing is DEI is anti-white. I saw a meme. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, I saw a meme that really described it uh, pretty nicely. Diversity means fewer white people. Inclusion means the exclusion of white people. Equity means stealing from white people. Yeah, and there was a, a company, a CEO. Was this is a CEO thing? The IBM. Show? No, the other one, that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this top insurance CEO announces that white male new hires must be personally signed off by herself as part of the firm's drive to improve diversity. So it's if you ever, if you want to hire a white guy, they're really gonna have to jump through a lot of hoops. You got to go through the CEO. You, you you do three rounds of interviews. You do a phone interview and then two in person. You meet the manager and then the CEO goes, "Fuck this fucking white guy." <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So this. So that's is, what they're doing in your country, you know, mm-hmm. to the people who came from the people who built the country. Yeah, there's like a tenth generation Texan out there who's like, I can't get a job at this insurance company. Mm-hmm. It's sad. But Pe- it's people sad. who are uh, like Union soldiers, the grandchildren, ch- children of the Mayflower. They yeah. can trace their lineage all the way back to the Mayflower, and they can't get a job at this insurance company without talking to the CEO first and justifying why being white is their greatest sin. Yeah, exactly. And this is wild to me because Asians, yeah, Asians are better than me at a lot of stuff. They have a higher household income. Yep. They have higher IQs, better SATs, stronger family units than me, a white guy, right? Yep. But I don't go around trying to get them fired and replaced with people who look like me at their job. I certainly don't. That would be crazy. Yep. I don't say Asians are better at SATs than me. We need to change the test or change how it's scored so me and Asians get the same score. That would be delusional and nuts. That would be absolutely crazy because people are built with variants. Do you agree with that? Yeah. yeah so yeah. Asians are better at test taking. That's fine. But if someone needs to dig a nose guard out of the A gap, Asians not going to get it done. They're not going to call the Chan family. Yeah, they might call not. me or one of my brothers. Yeah, we are good at that. Yeah. So there is a variance in people, and that's what everyone's kind of losing. But everything is going in a direction that opposes people being different, and instead make sure that America is less white with as much equality of outcome as possible for everyone else. Mm-hmm. And it's doable because the powers at play. Uh, use every uh, part of society to like make this a reality. So a lot of the white guys, they're distracted by P O R N. Yeah, they don't really care because they're all got they got P O R N brain. Yeah, uh, or maybe they're into stupid sports. I was thinking about this. I saw a thing on Twitter. Can yeah. you read that? It says the popularity of professional sports is meant to suppress nationalistic urges in a country's male population. Which is very true. Like the divide and conquer idea. It's like imagine a white guy from New York and a white guy from Boston. Mm-hmm. They have a lot in common. They're both from the Northeast, like very early uh, states and colonies or whatever. But they don't actually connect on that because fuck you, the Red Sox. Fuck you, the Yankees. Yeah. And now it's like we can't actually come together because there's all these little tribal things that divide us that aren't actually important. So yeah. You hate a guy from Boston if you're from New York because he's from Boston. But meanwhile, you're both in the same country and going to lose it. And you see the same thing in like England and Ireland, too, like all these uh, middle aged and, you know, even a little bit younger white men who are all angry after uh, Manchester United loses or something. And it's like, isn't the most popular baby name in London Muhammad now? Yeah. Like, so, yeah, you're bad at the football game, but you're being taken over. So exactly. Exactly. And we get called pieces of shit because we care. Yeah. But meanwhile, we're being colonized right now by people from a less ideal colony, a yeah. less ideal culture. We have we built this nice thing in America. We're getting colonized by people who fled. And we're you know? getting cut out and we're gonna become something less. Yeah. Which sucks. And it happens all over Chat GPT. There was an example on Chat GPT. Yeah. Uh yeah, they yeah, they asked Chat GPT, are black only spaces? Safe space is okay, and then Chat GPT goes, "Yeah, black only safe spaces are often created to provide a support environment for marginalized individuals to address shared experience." Blah blah blah. And then you ask the, "Are white only safe spaces okay?" White only safe spaces can perpetuate exclusion and segregation, which goes against the aim of creating inclusive environments. So everyone's in on it. Yeah. It's a scam. It's been put into motion for years and years. Here's a picture of an Ireland protest, and it says, "Ireland is for everyone." I see exactly zero Irish people in that picture. Yeah. Do you guys see what's going on? You kind of look and kind of get it. It's ugly. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you see what's happening? <laughs> uh, you starting to understand now? Um, yeah. So that takes us out of our DEI section, and we're going to move on to our last page of housekeeping. Speaking of inclusion. Okay. I saw over the weekend a commercial for a hotel. That was very inclusive. There was a lady with a skin condition, okay. a man with Down syndrome, a kid with a claw hand talking to a guy in a wheelchair. Wow. All in one commercial for a hotel. What the fuck is going on at that hotel? Overkill. <laughs> yeah, people get <laughs> mangled up. What convention is in town where everyone's staying at this hotel and they all got a little something wrong with them? I don't know. I don't understand. Also, speaking of inclusion, you ever see a midget Santa? Never. Not once. And a regular sized elf? Yeah. That's the real question. Because a midget Santa, that makes sense for going down the chimney. Hey, Target, call China. Get yeah. the production line running. Get we the- need midget Santas by 2025. Get the slaves over there yeah. working on midget Santas. 
All right, I've been doing some boiling water experiments now that I'm a big tea drinker. Okay. You know what I mean? Not really, but go ahead. So I learned this. A little bit of water boils very fast, right? Wow, you're learning about thermodynamics and you don't even know it? And a lot of water burns, uh, boils slow. Yeah. So I try to do experiments where I put, and I had to boil a lot of water. I put a little water, got it boiling, and then tried to add water to it to like, Trick get, it? To trick it and get it go faster. Okay. Didn't work. Yeah. You just have pockets of like warm water and it kind of restarts the process and it didn't really work and you kind of burn your knuckles. Oh, bummer, man. But Sorry I about did, that. I did find something that does work. If the water is almost boiling and, the, and there's bubbles on the bottom and you shake it, you can kind of jumpstart it into a rolling boil, but only saves you a couple seconds. All right. So that portion of housekeeping was dedicated to helping you few people who boil water into saving a couple seconds. Thanks, Fleckus. But I'm trying to help more. I just couldn't really figure out. He it. couldn't crack the case. All right. All right. Let's move on. That is the end of our housekeeping. We are moving on to Cringe of the Week. Before we get there, we are here to remind you guys that Christmas is basically here. And if you guys are watching the show and love the show or know people that do, now is the time to give the gift of bonus land subscriptions. In the bio, you will find a link to FleckusTalks.com where you can go sign up and give a gifted subscription for bonus land for that person in your life who is very based and loves the show. You will give them four hours of exclusive content each month for an entire year. Most gifts you give people get eaten in a day oh. or played with once and kind of left on the side or broken and barely not even returned or soiled blown out or yeah. blown out and you're talking soiled. about underwear right talking about underwear blown out and soiled pretty fast if you give the gift of Fleckus Talks bonus land you're giving an entire year of exclusive great content and supporting the show and the person who gets it's going to go wow this is great that, that's a really good gift Wow. So make sure you do that. Link is in the bio. FluckusTalks.com. Give that person in your life the gift of bonus land. All right. First clip of cringe. Hi, Senate. And I hate streamers section. You want to play the video first? Or yeah. Wanna... So it's Nicki Minaj and Kai Senate. And look what happens. Follow instructions. You got on lips, uh, uh, nail polish. No, this is no. That's gel tip. No, 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 no. Okay, whoa, whoa. I'm. A, hold on. No, no. This is. I, I get manicures. I'm clean. I can't. So why didn't you just say yes when I asked you? Is that nail polish? It's not. It's it's uh. It's clear nail polish. No, that's not nail polish. Gel gel polish. That's nail polish. Yeah. But it looks nice. I didn't say it didn't. You just became defensive because you're insecure. Next. Now. And he just gets his mind blown. Yeah. So he can't control himself, and his audience and him are so stupid that they only understand, like, yelling and over-the-top facial expressions. YouTube thumbnail-type faces and oh. reactions. And that's all the streaming is, is just, like, it, it's so stupid. Because I think Trying about to act out a meme or something. Like, it's almost yeah. like, oh! Like, oh, the craziest thing's about to happen, but nothing ever significant does, and you just waste hours of your time watching, like, an average IQ person not even entertain you. And I think about shows and content. We put a lot of effort into this show. Yeah. We're decently smart guys. Yeah. We prepare what we want to say in order, what clips we want to show, what points we want to make. There's some overarching themes attaching these ideas together. And we know? put a show together. Yeah. And people watch it, and they, for the most part, enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Who would ever watch streamers? You're watching someone who didn't prepare anything, who isn't that smart, who doesn't understand the world that good, kick the, you know, go, go off the cuff. Yeah. And shoot the shit off the cuff with nothing prepared. That's like my least favorite type of content. And it really, it's brain dead shit. W in the chat, L in the chat. Like they can't even, they're not even normal people. Yeah. It's kind of like a, and this is a Fleckus pet project too. Fleckus hates streamers. Yeah. He's always talking about, you see this? You see this stupid guy? You see mm. what happened here? So I don't know. That's a, And they always say like for our show, it's like those streamers think that they're better than us because they're live. Mm. But it's like, what, what has anyone from a stream ever said that was so profound or so insightful or like directed their audience into a, a, a new way of thinking? They just go like, oh, I heard Neon... 
he's fucked this girl. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, the girl cheated on him on a boat with the guy who sent the necklace into space of his girlfriend. Yeah. Rizzy's here. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And then, like, nothing gets accomplished in the stream and no one learns anything. And everyone that they're listening to is stupid. So, like, what could possibly happen? It's really not a good sign for Gen Z. They can't order off a menu. They get menu anxiety and then they watch streamers for four hours and nothing ever happens. So, I don't yeah. know. It's getting ugly out there. And they don't can, yeah. don't let your kids, if you guys have teenage kids, I direct them away from like streamers or stupid yeah. like YouTube shit like that. Is that Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? Nicki Minaj. So Nicki Minaj says, oh, you got nail polish on. She's not even like, oh, you got nail polish. She's just like, oh, you got nail polish on. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has to like freak out. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, I got a manicure and they put this stuff on to make it look nice. Yeah. I think it looks better than if I didn't get it done. He's not processing information. He's doing like comic responses. You yeah. Know? And like have an explanation. I think it looks better than if I didn't have it done. Oh, that's fair. That's it. But he has to yell and go crazy, and she basically just suns him and embarrasses him. All right, let's move on to the guy with the loser vows. Yeah, this one's bad. This kind of went viral kind of all over the internet. Um, we're not going to win any points here. Mm -hmm. There's only one take on this, So, but we just wanted to show it. I'll probably just smack ass every chance I get. <clears throat> That's all I got. Is that it? <laughs> Sure. I didn't write nothing down. No. That's what you're going out with. That's okay. what I'm going right, with. Cool. We've made it this long. That's what he's going out with. Somebody in the crowd goes, "Come on, Cody." The pastor, the guy marrying them, goes, "Is that it? You sure?" He gives him an extra chance, right? Yeah. Don't even do the wedding if that's what it's going to be. Why'd you do the wedding if your vows are going to be disrespecting your wife and making it purely sexual? And it, exactly, especially because a wedding is so much like more for the girl too. Like they like it. Their mm -hmm. family's there. This is their big day. They think about this day forever. And like she's going to remember this for the rest of her life, probably. And the clip went so viral and all women on earth are hating on this guy and being like, how disrespectful is this? So probably rethinking her decision at this point, even if she thought it was semi, you know, even 1% endearing at the time. Yeah. But, so what's the general rule here? What, are we, what do we learn from this? I would say that people, you're not as funny as you think. Don't do, don't try to do bits. It's not a time to do bits. You're it's, never as funny as you think in a serious moment for someone who cares about you, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, unless it's a banger, hey, yeah. we'll leave a 1% caveat. If you have a banger, funniest <laughs> yeah. bit on earth, try yeah. it. Try it on a couple people first. But this whole, like, I don't care, I have six. There was another one that went viral recently that was like, this guy goes, as long as you keep my belly full and my balls drained. We're going to be fine. It's like the woman's grandmother's there, and she struggled to, like, get on the plane to fly to wherever. Meemaw flew a like, thousand yeah. miles to be here. She hasn't here. flown in 10 years. Yeah. And you, and you say that. That's what, that's what it is. And then here's the thing, too. It's, like, guys think they're too cool or it's, like, gay to, like, be, be, serious. To be serious and soft with your wife. It's who's not. Like the one person. It's not gay to love your wife. That's right. So it's not gay to love your wife. If, respect the veterans. Respect your family. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> and so, I mean, dude, I, I know very few people are even going to come close to this or thinking about this. But guys, if you're if you're deciding on a bit, error on the side of no bit. All right. Yeah, it's 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 fine to have a nice serious wedding. That's just a normal wedding where everyone does a wedding. Yeah. You don't need to be the funniest guy. You don't need to go viral in a negative way. Yeah. So you embarrass your wife. Yep. You're a one now. You're merged as one. You embarrassed her. Yep. All right. Let's go to the Latinx frat. This isn't even Latinx. I just labeled it that. These are normal Latinos. Yeah. 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 Greetings. With the brothers of Latinx fun. You get it. I have a rule that I can't be beat up by anyone who does choreography. Mm. And it's for this. Yeah. This was horrible. Yeah. It's a cool dance routine, fellas. Uh, what are we yelling about in the food court for? <laughs> it's like my least favorite thing is stuff like that. Yeah. I don't even have much uh, on that. I just wanted to show and kind of make we should kind of shame that a little bit. I think so, too. I think so, too. Even if you're a, even if you're the shredded football team 
and you're actually all big. You don't need to start fucking stomp the yard. You don't need to stomp the yard. It's, it's stop. And hey, that's I mean, you know, we're making fun of it, obviously, but that's another culture who's coming to eat our lunch. But is that even the culture? Like, are Latinos like, ah, uh, I'd be doing group dances. If Yelling they, in group dances? No, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. They're kind of just leaning into something to pick something and stand out. But, like, you don't need to just stand out. There's a lot of ways you could stand out for not the best. Yeah. And that's one of them. All right. All right. Page two of cringe. Fat plane seats. Southwest has a new thing now where if you are a human-pig hybrid or some sort of bovine, uh, you can get two seats for the price of one because of how fat you are. Yeah. Um, and this guy had a funny tweet. He said two for one deals is what got him in this mess in the first place. Yeah. So we have to acknowledge that. But uh, this is a huge L for us. Yeah. For society at large, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I play the, the pig? Yeah, play the pig. Have you heard about the Southwest Airlines customer size policy and how plus size travelers who need more room can get a second seat for free or reimbursed if they book it in advance? I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can book your second seat for comfort on Southwest Airlines website using their customer size policy. Now let's get All right. She goes on to book it. We don't need to hear from this pig. And basically all you do is you pick two flights and then on the second flight when you put your name in, you put XS as the middle name for extra seat. Yeah. Whatever happened to being too fat to fly? Some people should be too fat to fly. And then, and then also, they have to yeah. drive across country and you got to drive to that clinic in Houston where the guy does the my 600 pound life stomach surgeries, right? And then you make things like really inconvenient for yourself and your family. And then they say, well, maybe you need to make some changes to improve your life so we don't have to do this anymore. Exactly. They're taking away these fat people's right and to hit rock bottom. Exactly. Yeah. So they're taking away the rock bottom moment. So they're like, I can just get two seats now. I can go. And then when the, now the new rock bottom got moved to when they take up three seats. And by that time, they're dead. Or that the whole plane flies like that. Yeah. So Southwest is killing people <laughs> by stealing their rock bottom and kicking the can down the Because rock road. bottom used to be, and it started, it's a slippery slope. It started with the seatbelt extenders. Exactly. And you've hit rock bottom. Why don't you tell the audience about that a little it bit? It wasn't full rock bottom. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I got, I mean, I've been close. To, he's, been, he's been close. So you buckle up and then it's like, oh, I don't fit in this seatbelt anymore. And it's like, oh man, by next Christmas, I better be smaller than I am now. Yeah. And then they get the seatbelt extenders and then the rock bottom should be, oh man, I was so fat next to that family and they had to sit like this and it was so embarrassing. And I just kept apologizing the whole flight. I'll never be this fat again. Yeah. Then that gets removed. And now it's just like a livestock plane. Exactly. Now, now they're sending, you know, and they, do they put and you Southwest, on a scale? Do they put you on a scale and say, what are you, 450? You have a 450 minimum for two seats. And now Southwest is going to become the fatty pig plane. You know, yeah. so it's like United's not doing this. Delta's not doing this. They and, want their yeah. revenue. Right. And this, does this apply for tall people? Because tall people actually have a case where it's like, hey, I'm six, nine. World's strongest man. Yeah. You, know? you ever see Eddie Hall in a plane seat? But this this uh, this type of thing, the way we got here, this is the same energy as canceling student loan debt. Mm. It's like, oh, you did it to yourself. Bail them out. Now you're getting bailed out. Yeah. So who did this to you? You did. Um, yeah. But the victimhood. Kicking, I. This is a massive loss for rational and functioning society. Yeah, I can't believe Southwest gave them any ground. Yeah, it's not and good. Uh, the internet's obviously having a big backlash. But man, it's stealing their right to hit rock bottom. To me, rock bottom is when you ask for the seatbelt extender. Mm -hmm. That should be rock bottom. And I've never asked for it, or needed it, or been unable to buckle. And yeah. they check. They check. So I've been fine, but I've been towards the end of the strap. <laughs> But I that wasn't even rock bottom, and I still pulled my way out. Yep, absolutely. I'm on a health journey now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Next, and we don't eat seed oils, and we only eat nutrient dense proteins. Fleckus, whenever I'm eating something like borderline disgusting, like uh, I'll be cooking something up, and while we're writing the podcast or something, he'll he'll, he'll look over and he'll go, "Oh, I remember when I used to do that." <laughs> oh, you po I go, you poisoning yourself? <laughs> I remember I used to do that. <laughs> like it's some distant memory, and he wasn't eating a Whopper three weeks ago. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hey, wait till after the you guys aren't even going to recognize me. All right. Let's see. Um, all right. Walmart worker. Last piece of cringe before we move on to Urban Decay. And we did so much with the Senate twink earlier in housekeeping that this is basically just uh, a twink free house. Twink free uh, cringe. Twink free cringe. Yep. A non trans cringe. Yep. Oh, uh, so I came into work today and I kid you not. I guess the store managers just walked in and he saw the doors or whatever in the windows talking about hey go get some spray and some paper towels and clean up the doors i'm like what do you mean that's not my job description he's talking about 
go get the spray and some paper towels and go clean it up. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. That's Jeremiah's job. So he walked away and now he done brought, I don't want to show your face, but he done brought another associate to come to me and bring me the glass cleaner and the paper. I done told them no. I don't want it. That's not my job. I legitly want you to see how this lady is like really like. So someone telling you to do something. You're a minimum wage worker at Walmart and you getting told to do something to keep the store going is oppression. It's offensive and oppression. Yeah. And but we also need to raise minimum wage so these types can raise a family. Yeah. And have more money. Yeah. Because some fries are $7. <laughs> yeah, but something ain't right. Something ain't right here. And I actually have no problem with this if you're okay with being fired and never being promoted in your life. Yeah. You know, there's a certain kind of like minimum wage worker, like a white kid at Chick-fil-A, who can kind of get to a manager path and then like own a Chick-fil-A down the road just through like borderline, not even that hard work. Like, like having a hustle in his step, a yeah. pep in your step and a hustle and a pride in your work and uh, not just counting down the hours till you can leave. Absolutely. And then I see a woman like this who's going to complain about it, not only just complain about it, but make a video like the whole internet's going to be on her side about it. Mm -hmm. And I just see someone who is going to perpetually be on minimum wage and never take a step in any direction in her life. And it's like, that's fine. That's fine. You can do that. You can have that shitty life. I don't want to hear you complain about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we shouldn't be taxed or whatever more so we can support people who don't have a good work ethic. Yeah. I hope she doesn't have food stamps or anything like that because that would yeah. be a crying shame. And say you, she probably does because a lot of Walmart are I know. part-time workers. I know. Um, and say you maybe don't have a good work ethic and you're like, how can I appear to have a good work ethic? Busy face. Have a busy face and walk everywhere yeah. quickly. Fast. I'm on my way to go do this. And it doesn't matter that you're going to the bathroom to scroll on your phone for 15 minutes. If you walk fast, you can look the part. Exactly. In your face. Look at my eyebrows. Normal. Busy. Yeah. He's thinking. Look at him calculating. All right. I'll take those paper towels and I'll, I'll make sure I get it to Jeremiah. Yeah. And then you're delegating. You give the job away to someone. Hey, Jeremiah, I just got a word. You got to clean the windows. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to be like, oh, I'll be right back. And you go like this. And you kind of shake your head like you're mad. Like, you, can, and you go fast and you go to the bathroom and you smoke your vape. I don't know. You might even have the makings of a manager if you delegate good enough. Yeah. So and then it becomes like I'm in over my head. I don't even know how to do this. But hey, a busy face will get you far. A bad attitude like that gets you on the fat podcast. And fat racist podcast. Fat racist podcast. And in some cases, in some cases like this, um, you know, I see this girl and I go, you're exactly where you need to be. Minimum wage at Walmart. And, you know, I don't think any sort of government services should be shelled out for you. Exactly. And when you hear of like, oh, Walmart exploits these employees and whatever, like there probably are some nice hard workers who do get a little bit exploited at Walmart. We're not going to argue that. A little exploitation. A little bit of exploitation. That's the game, right? But then you remember some of them are like this and Walmart's basically doing like almost babysitting them mm -hmm. for, for pay. So yeah. I don't know. There's two sides to every story. That's right. All right, let's move on. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. Moving on to Urban Decay. All right. First clip of Urban Decay, the 17-year-old murdered. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer clip, but it, basically you're going to see the story, what the policeman said, and then you're going to see what he, the policeman said earlier that he didn't include. 17-year-old Louise Wilson dreamt of becoming a police officer. But she didn't get that chance. She was robbed of her future Sunday morning in what Houston police are calling a road rage attack. We had to find a place to support her daughter. Luis's parents, Daniel and Krista, say she was driving with friends from their home in Whitney to Galveston Sunday morning to watch the sunrise. When police say she swerved to avoid a crash. She didn't do anything wrong. Still, another driver opened fire, killing Louise and injuring another 17-year-old, whose life police believe she saved, driving their vehicle to safety, despite being shot through the heart. She wanted to help people, and she helped them. Now her parents are asking for your help identifying her killer. And the suspect vehicle is described as a, as a, a clean, newer model, um, black four-door sedan. Um, and unfortunately, that's where we're at at the moment. Um, a suspect described only as a, a black male in his mid-20s um, in a newer model, black four-door sedan, uh, began firing into Luis's vehicle. 
So there's the difference. Striking her and initially, the they had the suspect's description, but then once at the press conference, they don't say it. All they say is he's a man in a sedan because I guess describing a suspect as being black is racist and insensitive, even though the suspect is literally at large and a murderer. Yeah, a suspected murderer on the run now. Yeah. You'd think that'd be priority to get some sort of immutable characteristics out there. Was he 5'4"? Yeah. Was he 6'10"? Was he white or was he black? These are really big differences that yeah. easily segment the population, and for some reason they're afraid of it. Which is interesting, and this is a theme we're seeing a lot, is black no matter what the situation or the context, so it's like a criminal, a gangbanger, a murderer, that still is better on the totem pole than anything white, even if it's a white victim. Mm. So it's like, because he's black, we don't want to say that. That might upset some people or that's insensitive. And I know there's a victim and a family who wants answers. The most innocent victim of all time, too. Like a girl, literally cute girl driving with her friends to go watch the sunrise. Yeah. And it's like, that's who gets killed in a random act of violence. And then BLM gets uh, in an uproar over like Jacob Blake or somebody who was George Floyd, who was lunging with a knife or passing a counterfeit 20. And it's like, this is a real victim. Yeah. And uh, it's just disgusting. And for some reason, I don't know. Woke. Because of the woke. Because of woke. Yeah. And we saw, I saw another example. Um, and this will get memory hold. This, is, this isn't part of a pattern. This isn't part of like a broad thing, even though it is. Mm-hmm. This will just get swept away as like a, a random act of violence, right? Yeah, exactly. And I saw another th- a situation that was similar with a similar theme where there was a woman who intervened in uh, a conflict and then was attacked herself and she defended herself and then she got uh, charged with premeditated murder. Yeah, this was a woman who was uh, found guilty by a jury after an hour and 29 minutes in Georgia, uh, accused of fatally shooting Kenneth Herring during traffic dispute. And basically the description is a black man commits a hit and run. A white woman intervenes leading to him assaulting her and in response, she shoots him. A jury composed of 11 black people and a black judge determined it to be premeditated murder. Expect a lot more of this going forward. Yeah, so the jury of of your peers is like a group of 11 racially motivated people who are tribal as fuck. And brain rotted. Yeah. And this is kind of like a bigger theme, too. Like, you think if someone's going to take over the country, they would get rid of, like, the foundational things that we have that make us legitimate and free. Like, the courts wouldn't even exist, right? Yeah, like, they would come in and say, oh, no more courts, no more innocent till proven guilty, no more jury of your peers. And then everyone go, wow, we're being taken over. This is fascism. This is bad. But in reality, they don't even have to do that. They just need to make everybody divided and retarded. Yeah. So they make all black versus white. So they make a lot of black people and white people hate each other. And then they make people really stupid, too, with all the content and what's going on and what's and in entertainment and TikTok and social media. And you convince everyone that, like, oh, these white people are the reason that black people have it so bad. So then when you have a jury of 11 black people, you're not going to have just outcomes. So now a jury of your peers isn't even worth anything, and you didn't have to bring a tank in and have an army of people with guns. You just kind of— It's a soft coup. It's a soft coup. And you know what's funny to me is this lawyer is probably the worst lawyer on earth for not getting at least four or five white people on that jury. Yeah. Like, that's a joke. Oh, yeah, 11 black people and this black guy's death after he attacks someone. And, like, this is a case of where if there was a camera or footage or something of it, like, it could have gone completely differently. But it's a, ah, take this guy's word for it. We're Mm -hmm. the jury. White person killed black person. That's all you need to know. Hour and a half of deliberation. That's, like, pretty quick. Disgustingly low. So Yeah. There was another situation um, because everyone obviously is called racist. That's a problem, whatever. And then when you do that, people are scared to act in righteous ways because of an unrighteous justice system. Why would I stick my neck out online for something that I know is right? I can be twisted by the media. I could be twisted by a jury. I could get any number of things happen to me. I'll just keep my nose out, right? Exactly. And we have like a Twitter thread that kind of explains exactly that. Yeah, so there, this... The tweet was about this news article about a depraved man who raped woman in front of other passengers on London Underground, right? Yep. Uh, And he was jailed. And so rape somebody in front of people, right? That's kind of unheard of in the first world. Exactly. Um, And so someone tweets saying, how does this bloody bastard rape in plain sight on the tube and no one helps her? Jailing him for only nine years isn't justice. It's a joke. Don't women's lives count? And then somebody responded and said, because good men are uh, wary of being called racist for intervening. That's why. 
I wonder how that happened, right? Like he's mm-hmm. the sarcasm is dripping. Um, and then somebody else comes in and replies, good men shouldn't have to worry about being called racist. Good men don't give people a reason. A good person would have intervened. And then the original poster who made that point, which we agree with, posted a link to uh, Daniel Penny. Yep. Uh, you know, obviously the famous guy who choked somebody out on the subway who was freaking out, attacking everybody, mm-hmm. who was a known miscreant criminal. Um, and the guy died. And so now Daniel Penny's charged with murder, right? Mm-hmm. Even though he was doing the good thing. Uh, and then the guy, the second guy replied, why the hell would you show this? This was a racist who strangled an innocent man to death and got away with it. You have a sickness. Nobody is entertained by your lunacy. So it's like full circle in the tweet thread within like five tweets of like, why isn't anyone helping? It's because we'd be called racist. That's not true. Well, here's an example. That guy's racist. <laughs> it's like you couldn't even. So you're arguing with like people with who think like children or something. I don't know. Like th- this guy can't even like go above himself and then imagine why someone might not intervene. Yeah. You know, he can't even think about that. He goes, nah, that guy was a racist. Well, that's a bad example. He fully believes it. So crazy. Yep. So let's move on to the guy who touches the guy's car. This was like an interesting interaction I wanted to highlight. This is a low IQ guy versus a guy who's operating in society. Yeah. Right? And look at the energy and how he talks. It's kind of the correct energy. Yo, yo, you just hit my car. You just hit my car? No, I tapped it. Just to say, don't stop right there. You stop right in the sidewalk. This is a tap. Bro, don't don't do that to my car, bro. What's wrong with you, bro? It's a way of talking to you. Don't stop in the middle of the sidewalk. Hi. Yo, this ain't ain't real, is it? What's that? Is this real? Are you going to take out a gun and shoot me now? Is this really happening? Yeah, I'm talking to you like an adult. One at all talk. Oh, that's new to you. Okay. It's your green. It's your green. He just cooked him. No, that's the energy, dude. Like, I'm trying to engage with you. I'm a person out here. It's not like, bro, what you just do? We live in a society. Yeah. uh, Welcome to Earth. This, you know, people kind of interact. You're also in New York City. And he's sitting in the middle of the crosswalk. Yeah. And the black guy doesn't know how to act because he's used to people letting him do whatever he wants or whatever. And everyone just goes, okay, yeah, that's fine. But someone who's just like actually holding up societal standards and kind of confronting, but in a polite way. Yeah, he tapped the car. He let you know. And it's like maybe he's racist. But in reality, it's the opposite of racism. Racism would be letting people do below societal standard things and not confronting because you don't think they can handle societal standards and yeah. do better. Mm-hmm. But actually not racist is treating everyone equally and expecting everyone to follow societal standards and if someone doesn't, then you call them out regardless of what they look like. Absolutely. So that guy is this week's henchman of the week? I don't know. He's more than a henchman. He's he was more. an operator. Yeah. that's a, He's a he's a, a general. Yeah. He's right. a rook. Oh, I like how he played it, too. What, are you going to escalate this to the craziest shit on Earth now and shoot me? Like, what? I tapped your car, man. Let's relax. It's, hello, welcome to Earth. Exactly. All right. And then he, here's something I wanted to show, too. We have some societal standards that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Look how they're different in another country like Japan. This is the iPhone store in or the Apple store in Japan. The most interesting fact about Apple stores in Japan, no of the phones is secured. So you could simply grab them and walk out of the store. But related to the traditions and the mentality in Japan, no one would ever do that. So that they even do not attach the phones in any way or secure them. Welcome to Japan. And so what? A couple salarymen every year kill themselves. Yeah, a little Sudoku here and there. (laughs) Sudoku? Sudoku? (laughs) What is it? Uh, Seppuku, I think. Yeah, you know. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Point being, man, uh, this, it's attainable. And it's right there. It's, It's in different pockets of the world. It's in different regions of America. Some are going down. We're definitely on a trend where there's less high trust areas in America than there are. Like, it's declining. It's not growing. Oh, yeah. But it's very attainable, and it's right there. And here's how Japan goes up the stairs in Japan. This is how it it happens in America, too, in certain places. I used to commute to work in Chicago, and uh, you keep a lane open for people. Yep. That's very nice. That's how society should be. And it's a taste. We could have it. All right. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. We're moving on to uplifting gold. We have a very nice uplifting gold today. Do we? Honestly, I don't know. You phoned it in? I didn't phone it in, but 
uh, I, uh, from, all the energy goes to the other sections yeah. other than uplifting or at goal. the end of the show yeah but hey first things first that horrible Jeopardy lesbian got fired Mayim Bialik announces she has been let go as host of Jeopardy um, Ken Jennings is the last man standing they were doing yeah. like a little switch off between them how is yeah Ken Jennings should get it Ken Jennings hates our politics hates us we probably hate his politics too but we agree we can rise above and say that Ken Jennings, that super champion who hosts pretty well. And is a nerd already. And is a nerd already and actually like knows the answers to the questions. He's probably the right guy for the job. A hundred percent. And he should get that job. And if they don't give him that job, he, that might be his red pill moment where he's like, you didn't give it to me. You gave it to this like black lesbian woman. <laughs> She's not black. Well, whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the vibe. And then think about how bad So that's a little made. justice. We got a little justice there. Well, a little justice until they give it to someone else. But think about how bad she must have done to get fired because she's like a lesbian woman. Yeah. So you have to really not be a fit. Yeah. All right. Pregnancy dunk. <laughs> Those guys are doing a birthing baby announcement or whatever. Gender reveal. What was the ball? I thought the YouTube fail. <laughs> that ball, that contact sounded like, like a baseball. Yeah. That was like a metal canister. Not good. Not planned out. Um, we still don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but the wife needs a nose job. Yeah. And she's got half of one. Yeah. She just needs to now shape it a little better. It's ugly. All right. Let's go to the air ball foul shot. What is this? Opposite of women's uplifting gold? Yeah. So you get so you get roasted in it. I'm her mom. It's fine. Heckled by the by some stranger. No, 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 no. It's personal. Um, let's go to the good luck studying for finals. This is funny to me. <laughs> so this is hilarious to me. And in college, freshman year, we used to go to Brock's room. Yeah, we used to hang out in Brock's room. And in Brock's room, you know, I'm not going to incriminate anybody, but we would like smoke the vape the weed you know smoke weed vape or whatever and then we would sing songs and then we would like bounce a ball sometimes <laughs> and then one time a guy came and knocked on the door and we were like scared we used to have hiding spots yeah so, so you hear a knock on the door like everyone would get into there's like five of us and we're all offensive linemen and gigantic and we would all get into position I, like one was behind the dresser like two people under the bed one people under the one person under the desk i think someone behind the door so we had our hiding spots. So someone knocks on the door. Brock goes to answer his own room. <laughs> and he's like, guys, you need to please be quiet. You come in here every day like clockwork at 3 o'clock. Smells like weed. You're bouncing a ball, singing songs and shit. <laughs> and, just, and, and as he said that, I think like Brock had the ball under his arm or something. So yeah. he couldn't even deny it. He couldn't be like, oh, it's not us. It's like you have the ball in your hand. Uh, dribbling a basketball <laughs> singing songs and shit and it's like yeah that's actually accurate that's exactly what we've been up to so that poor kid who lived underneath Brock freshman year he's like I'm not even mad just please like I'm begging yeah. you every day you do this singing songs and shit so and funny it's like alright you got us yeah you got us <laughs> alright let's go to the uh, barber down syndrome haircut yeah let's see it uh, no here he goes He's seen how a barber does it. Yeah, he knows that you go like you this. You go like that, you wipe it, you, see, you cook it off. Yep. And you go like that, and you brush it off. And that's uplifting. Anyone can do anything. There's no difference between him and any other barber. Yep. I'm gonna. I'm setting my appointment next week. I'll be there. Yep. And that's, I mean, I buzz my head every week. It's mm -hmm. basically the same thing. Yep. All right, wheelie for a dollar. Let's end the show on that. You're what? <laughs> Damn! Oh, you got two ones? Holy shit. All right, I got to do a wheelie. I'll get you on my Instagram. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me... Hell yeah. That's Americana. Little kid hustling for dollars. Wheelie for a dollar. That's pure Americana. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's the end of the episode. Anything else? No, man, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. This is our last week before our break, so, you know, you can kind of see a little vacation at the end of the light. Yeah. At the end of the tunnel, and uh, it feels good. 
we've been going twice a week since July, that little break we took in July, and it's good. We have a nice pace. Yeah, how's everybody enjoying twice a week? Remember when we used to just do Fridays? That was crazy. It's crazy. Now we got twice a week, and we're going to keep that going. We have an important election year coming up, which is very exciting. Uh, so yeah, make sure you guys do the gift and subscription, sign up for Bonus Land. During the week off, we're going to have a little Christmas special. Nothing crazy, but it's going to be funny and good. We kind of cracked it today, and we have our whole Christmas special outline, so we're excited to deliver. Hopefully, it'll be funny to you guys. And, Henchman uh, maxing is the theme. Keyword. Henchman Just maxing. to tease it out a little bit. Uh, so make sure you guys sign up and join for that, because next week there's going to be no shows uh, on Tuesday or Friday, but there will be the Christmas special. Uh, during that week and then the week after we come back the Friday after uh, New Year. Yeah. So that first Friday, that January 4th or 5th or whatever, we'll be back. So we'll see you guys on Friday and in bonus land. Goodbye. Jingles. Is this really happening? Yeah. I'm talking to you like an adult. One adult talk. Oh, that's new to you.